Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft PowerPoint. In this module, I want to go through the 10 most common mistakes people make when using PowerPoint. So number 10, no transition on a slide. So basically when you click to the next slide, it just appears and it can look very clunky. So transition should be on every slide, but it doesn't want to be too overwhelming. There are lots and lots of different effects. You need to keep it simple and you need to keep it standard on every slide. If you want to put music on transition, it should only, as a rule, be on the first slide. And then on the second slide, that music should stop. That would be used in a, a large audience. So when the music stops, it attracts the audience's attention. On this one, you can hear the Blue Danube playing. When I'm ready to start my presentation, I just press enter and the music will stop. And then I can get into the presentation and hopefully the audience will look up because the sound has stopped. Number nine, no animation on a slide. Add animation to slides, animating the bullet text if you're using bullet lists or whatever you're using will stop people reading ahead. So they're listening to what you're saying and not writing notes down on whatever else is on the slide. Keep the animation simple. It doesn't want to be distracting from the content of the presentation and keep it relevant. Do not make it a distraction. So on this slide, there is no animation. So everything has appeared. So you can see all of the bullets. So if I'm now talking about Napoleon, the audience could be writing down about Marshal Ney and cavalry and making sure they get everything on this slide. With animation selected, that won't happen. Number eight, giving out handouts before a presentation. People will again read ahead and not be listening to what you're saying. So you're not doing a presentation. They are just taking notes and trying to get ahead of where you are. Give the handout at the end and add your notes to the to the handout so they've got copies of what you actually said or what your main points were. This is an example of what a lot of presenters do give out at the beginning of a presentation with a notes area for people to write on. Problem with that is usually the room is dark and it's quite hard to see what you're writing. So I would rather have my notes listed there and then give that out at the end. Number seven, one more bullet on a slide. People go through their slides, talking away fairly slick, and then they think the slide has ended, so they start uh, changing their voice, ready to talk about the next slide, and lo and behold, another bullet appears. If you set your animation correctly, like this, that should never happen to you. So I've got this set so it loses focus and changes color. So as I'm coming down, you can see it changing color. And when I get to the last item, infantry, now if that was the last item, it would change color and a new item would come up. But there is no new item coming up. So I now know that the next click on the mouse is going to be a new slide. So my voice would reflect that. That's just animation, custom animation. Number six not familiar with the presentation content. Don't show your audience your structure. Create hotspots to navigate quickly around your presentation if you need to get up back and forward between slides because somebody's asked you a question and you're not quite sure where that slide is. Don't use the right mouse controls unless you absolutely have to. That again shows everybody that you are struggling to find a particular slide. So if you think you're gonna get asked questions, have it prepared beforehand. So this is what I'm talking about. Once you put this on the screen, everybody can see the whole structure and then you're going through these slides, trying to find the one that is relevant to the question you might have had. Now on the right there, you can see the right mouse click. And again, you've got all these different options. Um, see all slides is what's been selected. I just, I just use the G key on the keyboard does the same thing. On these slides, I've got a hotspot in the top corner where I can click and it will go on to um, the index slide on every slide. So that's what you should have. Number five, annoying sounds. 
try and avoid too many sounds. Don't put a sound on every bullet. It really is distracting. And like I've already said, if you put sound on the transition, it should only be on the intro slide and not every single slide. There's the hotspot going to the index slide. So if I just click that for a second, it will take me to the index slide and then I can come back to annoying slide, uh, annoying sounds. So I can click on that index annoying sounds So quickly get myself there. So on this one, this is an annoying sound. So I've pressed that and now it's playing a set of drums. And if you have the drums on every single bullet, it eventually it will become really irritating to the audience. Try and avoid that. Next one, too much animation. It distracts from the presenter. Should only be used for impact and it should be standard throughout your slide. So don't go pick a different um, animation effect on every single slide because people will just remember the animations and not the content. For example, this is too much going on. Lots of animation going on there. Number three, small images. People, when they're trying to explain new processes where new documents are coming into force, Try and put a picture of the document on the screen and nobody can see that information. If you've got new documents that you want to point out, how to fill them in and things like that, you should just give a hard copy of the document out to the audience or create a hyperlink to that document on the network, wherever it is. So here's an example of what I mean. There's a picture of a document. Can't read that. It's too small. But here is a hyperlink to it. So if I click that, it should just go to the actual document and then you close the document down and you're back to the presentation. Number two, there is too much text on a slide. The text then becomes too small to read, too much information and shouldn't really be there because it usually means that the presenter doesn't know what the content is about and they are actually using the text as a crutch for any information gaps they may have. There should only be trigger points on the slide and then the presenter should be presenting that information to the audience. Like that, too much information. You should try to get three points on the slide. Care plan, so then I will talk about the care plan. Care training, I will talk about training. And care support, I'll talk about the support that there is available. They're the triggers three points and then it's up to me to do the presentation. I might have notes that I can refer to, um, but that keeps it fairly clean and now I'm presenting. And then the number one annoying mistake that people make is reading the slide because they have their back towards the audience when they're doing that. It means they're unprepared and don't know what the content is about and it's not really a presentation because that's all you see, the back of their head. So these are 10 common mistakes. There are many, many more, and no doubt many of you will think of other ones, and please put them in the comments if you do, and I'll add them at a later date. But there's the index slide that I talked about. So basically, I can go back to any of these slides, and because I've got a hotspot in the top right hand corner, I can click back and forward between the different sections and I'm not needing to put the, the whole slide structure on the screen. So that is the end of this little session. So hopefully you found that useful and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for your time.